Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. I wanted to show you um, how I made some of these vellum pockets. Um, I have exact measurements for those that need that. And we are using uh, paper doilies as accents on these. I have some heart-shaped ones, some just regular ivory and then uh, colored one circles. And then I have some aqua, some green. I've cut some in half. Um, I will show you how I use these. Um, now, you can um, directly adhere these to your journals. Let me get mine from behind me. You can put these straight into your journal, like so and just put some I would put um, score tape on the back and adhere them straight into your journals if you want to or you can clip them in so I was going to get one of those um, little dangly clips that we made in an earlier video let's see if I've got one right here yes Okay, and you can just clip them in. Now you can use just a regular paper clip. You don't have to use a fancy dancy one. But I was just gonna show you that you can put it in with a paper clip. Well, if you do the paper clip onto the page, that is, you can clip it on with a paper clip. Just like that, or... So pretend Mickey Mouse is not on the end of this one. <laughs> and there you can just clip in your um, vellum pocket. So that is what we are going to be making today. And this one, I have already put some stuff in. That's what it looks like without anything in it. Um, these are just some little die cuts. I had fussy cut out of a digital kit and put them down in there. And then I put some washi on one side of my pocket. And then I cut a dolly in half and put that here with some liquid glue. And then I have a washi sticker on top of that with a little um, word label here from Nancy's Fancies. And then another little die cut piece um, stamp. This one, I put the doily on top, so it has like a little doily flap closure on the top of it. So I did not notch it here. I put all kinds of stuff down in there. I put washi on the side of this one also, and then made a little collage and put a wax seal in the middle. Um, I will link the video below if you have not seen my wax seal video where I made these and um, you can go and watch that if you'd like. I put a little pink bling over here and uh, that just kind of goes along with that washi that I put over here because it had that pink flower in it. I have not used those type of little bling dots. They're, um, I don't know if I can get close enough so you get, yeah. They're very sparkly and they're bumpy. They're not smooth. I have not um, used one of those in so long. Uh, they thought I forgot their phone number. You know, those people that <laughs> tell you, oh, I hadn't heard from you in so long. I thought you forgot my phone number. That's um, how those little bling dots felt about me. I have not used them in so long because I'm just not into sparkly stuff right now. But that really went with that and then you got that gold full on that washi thought that was very cute and then this one has a little cluster on the side of it and what i did was i got one of my doilies and i just went ahead and did my little cluster on my doily before i put it on my pocket and then went to my sewing machine and did a zigzag zigzag stitch <laughs> That's hard to say when you're talking fast. Did a zigzag stitch on that cardstock 
but it was already clustered onto that. So it's actually on all of that, stitched all the way through. And then I glued it on and went ahead and wrapped it around. So this way, this one I was thinking I would not uh, permanently adhere it into a journal. I could just clip it in somewhere, even from the top after I would put stuff in, just clip it in and then um, you can see doily on the back also. Um, I used one of the Tim Holtz Field Notes stamps from that set and stamped in Stays On Ink. If you want to stamp on vellum, Stays On brand ink is the go-to ink to use. Um, I've had a few questions about that and what I would use. Uh, glassine bags, vellum, washi, anything like that that you want to stamp on that has a glossy kind of sheen to it, stays on ink is going to be the ink that you need to um, stamp that on. And it does not smear, it sets quickly, you don't have to heat set it. I love stays on ink to stamp on things like this. Um, that's a um, die cut piece from Miss Betty Ann Renfro, uh, some uh, book page, and then a little stamp from one of the collections we've just had in the shop, and y'all bought us out really quickly, so we have them reordered. Um, but they were just little butterfly and mushroom um, faux stamps in a package. And then on the backer board, you get a little vintage looking postcard too. So it was like a twofer. We loved that package that we got. And it's from overseas, so it will take a little bit for us to get those back in stock. But we are trying feverishly to get those back in stock for you uh, as far as when this video is being shot. Okay, now let's go ahead and make one of these. And I will give you, like I said, I'm going to give you all the measurements so that um, you can make these. And of course, you can make them in a, a different size if you want to. But I just made these this size because I thought they were a really good size for half sheet, <laughs> half sheet junk journals. I can't talk this morning. It is Monday when I'm um, shooting this video, so maybe that's what it is. We have had a very, very active weekend and active last week also, so I guess, and my voice is all gravelly because we had a singing yesterday or um, yesterday evening, and um, it was a really, really good service. I'm get me a drink of my coffee. But now my voice is all gravelly. Y'all, usually on Mondays is when I have the most gravelliest voice. <clears throat> and it's usually because we have sang our little hearts out over the weekend. Um, and that has been the case this past weekend. Um, I'm going to get my cutter, my trimmer. You'll need a score pal or whatever you score with. I have um, eight and a half by 11 sheet of vellum cardstock, and this is the um, 40 pound um, weight, whatever, however, I still don't understand all of that. I mean, you know, this does not weigh 40 pounds. It is a um, measurement of thickness. So I'm assuming. So this is the 40 weight um, vellum, and we have had it in the shop. Um, we do have packs of vellum that's a little thinner than this one, and that would work fine too. These are, um, will be back in stock by the end of this week. So, at you know, this current video recording, um, they will be back in stock. We have tried to buy out the manufacturer because these make this weight of vellum makes really good pockets. So it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock or vellum, and I am cutting it at the five and a half mark. So I'm just cutting it in half on its length. Okay. So then you have, 
and that's really the last time you need the trimmer unless you need it for some of your decoration. So then you are left with vellum that is eight and a half long by five and a half tall. So five and a half by eight and a half. Then you're gonna get your scoring tool, whatever you use to score. And you're gonna score it at two and a quarter, two and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches. Now, all scoring pals are not the same, but I can only show you what I have. So, wherever your score lines are on your score scoring tool, score pal, whatever you have, score this on the long side, lay it out long ways, and score it at two and a quarter and six and a quarter, okay? Then keep your score pal out or scoring tool or whatever you're using. Keep it out. And go ahead and fold over those lines, those score lines that you just did. I find it really, really easier, especially with vellum, to keep it on the scoring piece and then fold it over. It gives me a buffer right there, you know, to kind of fold it and get it right as I would want it. Okay, so then you have this piece here. You should have <clears throat> a four inch wide pocket, okay? Then you are going to turn it while it is folded, keep it folded. You're gonna turn it and on its height, so this is your pocket. This is gonna be the bottom, this is the top. Bottom top of your pocket. You're gonna turn it and you're gonna score at five. And I'm gonna do it quite a few little times because you're going through essentially three layers there. Then you're gonna open it up. You have your pocket lines here and then you have the bottom lines all the way across. You are going to trim these outside rectangles off. Okay, so the outside score lines on your flaps get taken off. I've got you zoomed in really, really close, so I'm looking up to make sure that I have you in frame at all times, because I wanted you to be able to see um, all of the detail of these. I'm gonna pull up my black cardstock so you can see that a little bit better. So now, now you have your score lines there. And it, you've got a little bit like, what is that, a fourth of an inch? Um, Almost a half an inch lip of a fold over on the back. And then you have this flap down here now that you have cut off those two rectangles there. All right, I am going to go ahead and round the corners of that flap that's gonna come up. And then that way, if I decide I'm just going to, um, let me get one here. So if I'm just going to uh, clip it into my journal, then when I take it off, it's got that little decorative back to it. You don't have to round the corners. That's just a little extra of me to do. So, you don't have to do that. Now, I'm trying to find, there it is, my score tape. I use score tape on my vellum pockets. I just think it looks better. Um, the liquid glue tends to run all over the place when I use it on my vellum. So, this is quarter inch 
score tape and I'm putting it on my bottom flap. And then I'm going to put it on the middle also. So I'm just gonna pull up one flap, go down the edge of it. It does not have to go all the way top and bottom. This lip is gonna catch it here. And then if you do a, um, a notch, then you're gonna not need glue there anyway. So just a little strip down the middle. Okay, and then you're going to Use your bone folder to help you get that turned up the way it needs to be. And with, if you don't use your bone folder, uh, you will regret it because I tried it earlier on my pieces here and one of them did not go well and it did not fold up correctly. So see how pretty that is on the bottom as far as straight across. That's good. All right, so now you have your base pocket and you can decorate it any way you'd like. You can notch it any way you'd like. We have a four inch wide by five inch tall pocket. So four by five pocket is your finished um, measurements for this little vellum darling we are doing. Now, um, here is where you figure out, do I want to round my corners? This one, I did not round the corners. This one, I did. And then this one, I did. I put a notch in, rounded the corners. I like how this looks. It's a nice, clean look. I think I might just notch the top and not round my corners here. So, I'm using my one and a half inch circle punch and I'm just going to do a very shallow notch on this one. Find my other pieces of vellum. So there is your little pocket. You can use it as is or you can be extra and you can <laughs> decorate it. Um, I'm thinking I want to use another one of my little wax seals that I had made the other day. And I love how imperfect this one is. So I think I might go with um, colors that's going to go with that. I really love how that one just turned out a little bit wonky. Because, you know, we're all a little bit wonky, I think. All right. And I think maybe I can get some <clears throat> excuse me, gold accent somewhere here. And then a little bit of like a rust or copper coloring through here somewhere. I like that typewriter. Look at that. Oh yeah, and some book page. Mm, I'm loving this already. And then maybe a little um, strip of something with some aqua in it to tie that in. Aqua is about my favorite color ever. That and teal. Love those colors. I really like that typewriter piece. And I've had that in my scraps for a long time. I um, cut that out of some um, papers that I was using at one time. And then I had a lot of the cut apart sheets left and just didn't have anything to uh, use it on. So I just put it in my little bowl over here and it's just been sitting and sitting and sitting. So I like that I'm able to use that. All right, that is a little too blue, I think. Yep, but it does have the gold accents. That was very pretty. Let's see. I might not have any uh, aqua. Oh, I don't know. I like that clock. And I kind of like that word, too. Let's see if I've got any more of those little words anywhere. Yes, I do. 
see if any of these other ones will go better. Ooh, I like inspired. There we go. All right, we are going to, um, I use these on uh, my word dangles um, video where I layered up um, some words I had printed off and um, they all kind of look distressed and inked like this on some bulb clips. And so that video is, um, oh, about what? three, four, maybe, videos back. You'll see them when you see the words on my little thumbnail if you want to go and watch that. Now, I'm just cutting this uh, willy-nilly out because I want it wonky because my little butterfly's wonky. So we need to give it some attention. And then I'm gonna get my little distress tool. This is from Prima. I've had this forever in a day. I'm going to really rough up those edges. If I don't watch it, I'll rough up my nails too, which I desperately need my nails redone. I just hadn't taken time to go do that. There we go. So I really rough that one up and then I will ink around the edges and dirty it up pretty good. Just because it's so stark white, it needs some extra vintage attention. Oh yeah, I like that. Let's do a little bit more there and there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then I'm going to do that little clock. Let's cut that out. Now, that is a feat in itself because who likes to cut out circular images? Not I. Uh, let's see here if this is something that could be. Nope, that's too little, and I don't have a bigger circle punch. So we're just going to have to fussy cut it out. Bite the bullet. I get it all crazy. All right. And then if we can ink the edges. And kind of cover up our little boo-boos. Okay. And then I'm thinking there with that. Oh, I like that. Pretty. And then do my little inspired word down there. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. I like that little cluster we have made. And then that just kind of ties in with that. And I'm thinking maybe I have a little piece of bling somewhere that's kind of coppery looking. Let's look. It's not like... I don't have some bling because, gracious, I have the bling, that's for sure. I used to be bling crazy. And then I kind of got away from it a little bit. I like those, but they're not coppery enough. Look at there. I knew I would have something. So these are actually called red. They're from Queen and Company. They're called red, but they're iridescent, and they go really well with that. They got a lot of gold look in them. So I'm thinking that in the center, the center, <laughs> center, oh man, what's in my coffee, of my clock face there. And I'm going to fold that doily over and let's ink our book page piece. And then we're going to ink around that typewriter piece. This was from a Simple Stories collection. It's no longer in print. I think it was like heirloom or something like that. I've used this before. Um, and I just think it was one of the best collections that Simple Stories ever came out with. All right, so let's put some 
glue on the back of this. And what I like to do is um, decorate on the dolly first or whatever you're um, going to decorate your pocket with. I just like to decorate on that piece first before I start um, gluing everything down. There, and then here, and here, and there, right? Yep, that's how we had it. And then I want a little bit of the doily showing at the bottom. After I do the whole collage, cluster, whatever we're wanting to call it. So I want to move that up a little bit. And then just always making sure that you're in whatever frame you want to be in. I think I like that showing too, but it's going to be covered up when I do the... Yep, let's move it up just a touch more. I almost said just a hair more. We say that a lot here in the South. Okay, there. Yep, I like that. And then we will turn it this way. Yep, I really need to do the over that way. Okay, so. Oh, for all y'all that have to endure my crazy chit chat talking while I'm making a cluster. God love y'all. There. And then there. Get that glued almost all the way to the edge because we haven't got this dually all the way down yet. So I'm gonna make sure I can see the typewriter all the way, and I can. All right, now I'm going to glue this on to the dolly. I mean, the <laughs> the pocket. The dolly is going to be glued onto the pocket, Melina. Yep, like that. I'm going to move my black cardstock and then go ahead and fold it over, fold that dolly over, and then just put in a little bit of glue on the solid pieces of your dolly. And then fold that over. And then back this way, and my inspired piece has already started gluing down. I'm gonna glue around on the back and then wipe off any excess because you will have excess and watch that paper doily because some of them are very delicate so you might need to pat 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 to get off the excess all right so now we're going to put this on here and i like using fabrifix or fabrtac whichever one you have um to put down my wax seals just because they work so much better and it adheres pretty quick. I've tried just using regular liquid glue and it just does not do the job that I want it to do. So there and get it set where I want it and then just press down and it takes just I would say right at a minute, I would hold it down just to make sure that you've got all the edges down like you want them. And then I really like, especially on this vellum, I really like how the um, glue is kind of squishing out on the side. So I don't wipe that off. And I'll show you on this, this other one that um, I have done that you can see little glue marks on the outside edges. I'm gonna wipe my hands off and see it's still pulling up some, but like on this one, 
you can kind of see where the glue squished out on the edges and I like that look. So I will just continue to hold down. Be right back. All right. And then I will get one of these little blings. I like using the um, my stylist that's got the pointy, very pointy end. I'm gonna put that on the middle of that clock face or pretty much on the middle so that that kind of goes along with that wax seal color. I like that, cute. And then of course you can do all kinds of things um, to the vellum piece itself if you wanted to do something a um, little extra to put over here if you wanted to put some washi like I did on the edges you could do that I like how that one turned out so here are the ones we have done so far uh, I have done these off camera and then this one we just did together so it is not as busy as some of these are but I really like that. Could put it in even with a binder clip. That's cute. Put all your stuff in your pocket and then put it in with a binder clip. That's very cute. I like that. I know I say cute a lot when I'm making videos. Sorry about that. Um, another thing you can do if um, you don't want to sit and hold a wax seal, you can get one of your old books and lay it on top of it and just let it sit like that for a little while. Um, okay, let's do another. You'll need your scoring tool back. Okay, then whoopsie, two and a fourth, two and a fourth inches, six and a fourth inches, and then, like I said, I like to um, use my Score pal to help me get those lines folded over the way they should be and not too wonky. Now, I have scored this one a little too hard and I split that, but it is a very, very easy fix, especially if you like washi tape. So, I'm turning it, scoring it at five. Okay, and then I'm cutting off my outside rectangles. So yeah, that's not a problem right there for me since that vellum split, um, I will just use some washi and get that covered up nicely. All right, I think I will put washi on both sides of this one. That will be cute. All right, and I'm going to round my corners and put on my score tape. I want to round the corners of this one. Let's pull up our black cardstock so you can see that a little better. I've got a little bit of a um, score line right there. I'm just going to do my quarter inch round but I will cover that up with some washi. 
I think I will do a little bit of layered washi on the edge of this one. So see, you've got that little split there where I scored it too hard. And even with this being 40 pound vellum, you know, that can be a issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on its face, on just on the front here. And then I will use another piece of washi to wrap around. So I'm gonna put this right down the edge here. Okay, so that covers up that score line piece that was a little wonky and out there. And I just trim off the top of the washi with my sticky scissors. Right then, I'll get another pattern of washi, about like that. And I will fold this one over. Now I'm gonna go with the widest. Yep, I'm gonna go there and just get a little sliver of it there. And then there's where your split is in your vellum. And just fold over that washi. And there you've got a little decorative edge on your pocket. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and notch this one. And let's see, thought about this little heart doily. I don't know, that's a little too Valentine's Day for me right now. Let's go to this one, and I think I might go high on this one on the other side. That's cute. And do I want to put some washi behind that? Nope. Maybe just a piece of that edge one down here, just to kind of match it up be a little matchy-matchy. I'm usually not a matchy-matchy girl, but that's some fun washi tape. And this one has been in my stash for a while, so it is really, really, really stuck to itself. All right. Just a little piece like that to kind of match the other side. Let's go pretty wide on the front and then just fold it over to the back and use my sticky scissors to cut off that little excess there. And then that'll be, oh yeah, that'll be seen on that side on the bottom. That's cute. Mm -hmm. Tracy Fox labels, some map cardstock, and then some butterfly cardstock. And what else? I kind of like that blushy pink because it kind of goes along with that. Yep, I like that. Okay, so let's make a little cluster with this on this little dolly. Let's go, I like the edge of that. So I think I might just go with that piece. Go here. Yep, I like that little edge there. And then I'm gonna come straight down this way to get some of that blushy color from out of that map paper. There. And 
here and then do just a little strip of it here and there. Okay, just that little bitty bit showing there. And then I'm thinking off to the edge doing this little butterfly. Let's see, I might do the big one and just half it. Oh yeah, I like that. So I'm just gonna use my one and a half inch circle punch and just punch out that little butterfly there. And when I fold the dolly over, have that like that. That's pretty, I like that. And then I'll do a little label. So let's ink our edges of our little torn up cluster before we take it over to the sewing machine. All right, I'm gonna glue down. Look how crazy that paper is on the back side. Ew, that's some wild paper. I'm gonna get this glued down. And I mean, now you can barely even see the little blush part of that map that I was wanting to use. Oh well. That's what you get when you collage. You kind of lose some of the, some of what you were going for. But I like how it all comes together. That is pretty. Okay, there. And then do it there. I will ink this. I'm not going to put that on at this very moment because I'm going to sew down this and I will ink that in just a minute. So I'm going to sew. Okay, let's go ahead and glue that down. Where we want it. I'm going to pull it down just a touch so it's not over my notch up there and then just put a few little dabs out this way just to get it secured down and then one up top needs to happen somewhere there we go and then fold it over and get a few little dabs back here. There we go. Cute. All right, I'm gonna take off my... There we go, and then ink this up. And then, do I want it there? Do I want it there? Oh, I like it right there. That's pretty. Now look at there. I'm gonna cover up every bit of the blush part of that map piece. Oh well. Okay, and get off my excess. Let's go with the stays on ink and we're going to stamp this little specimen stamp from Tim Holtz there in the corner. Cute. It just goes right over the washi tape too and stamps very well. I love that. Oh yeah, one of these little cream colored pearls would be very cute. I can't stand when packaging doesn't cooperate with me. Okay, and then get a little, oh yeah, we're gonna put a 
Tracy Fox label on there too. I think this little one right here. Oh, that's pretty. All right, and then I got this teeny tiny little bitty label. And I'm thinking I want to put it over here and not on my cluster because my cluster is just pretty like it is. So, put it over here like it's a little specimen number to go along with that stamp we just did. Cute. I really like that one. So, I want to see your vellum pockets that you make. You gotta show me. Let me see yours. I am going to give you some still shots at the end of this video so you can see up close and personal little details. And I'm gonna pull you out just a little bit here. And here are our vellum pockets with doily accents. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Let me know how you enjoyed this and what you would like for me um, to show you in a next video. Maybe um, you will inspire me to um, make my next project and my next video, whatever it may be. I so enjoy making these and they can be mass produced so easily. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. God bless and y'all have a great day. Bye y'all.